Hi, triple fans. Here is a pile of books. You're not triple fans. You're triple students. You may or may not be fans. It's bad luck if you're not. So <laughs> here is a pile of books. Um, what I'm going to do, this is a two-parter. So I'm first of all going to go through people who developed the theory of evolution. Um, interesting players which we sort of did in the last one so it's just a bit of recall and then we're going to look at something called speciation um so it's a bit of a two-parter the first one probably doesn't require extensive it's just a little bit of history and then we're going to go into why darwin why his theory of evolution and then we're going to look a bit more depth into speciation and the next lesson we're going to look at how uh the idea of modern genetics came about so here we go. i just wanted to talk to you about this lady um this is Mary Anning um, and she sells seashells by the seashore. That is what she is most famous for. You don't need to know any of this. It's just really interesting. She's known as the mother of paleontology. Um, I don't know why I kept all this in here. It's just interesting. She was named after a sister who died in a house fire. I, it's, it's horrifying. She and her brother were the only survivors among 10 children born, which is just unbelievable and she survived a lightning strike that killed three siblings the lightning turned her into a bright and observant child it, i mean incredible like it's a really good example so i was talking uh, about a student who shared some videos of some birds birds give birth to many many offspring but only a few survive um, and that was true of humans until we became really really good at keeping people alive um, um, and obviously contraception um she didn't go to college etc because women women didn't do that but she used to, um she used to collect uh seashells and fossils and she became an expert in fossils particularly fossil feces which i found quite funny um there is a letter concerning um a discovery of a plesiosaurus over there Um, so let's talk about Darwin. We've spoken about him a bit more. Um, he joined the survey of South America on board the Beagle. So the HMS Beagle was the famous ship that he went and did his tour of the Galapagos Islands and um, Mauritius. And this is where he found his finches and he looked at the differences in the finches and how they adapted through natural selection. He kept detailed journals and brought back thousands of specimens. Um, and he spent the next 10 years cataloguing them. Um, it's important to note that the Galapagos Islands um, have lots of famous um, animals that are only um, habituated on those islands, such as the big tortoises and things like that, but he brought quite a few back. Um, there's some interesting genetics um, surrounding this as well, because apparently they, they um, threw one of the tortoises overboard um, and that then swam to another island. So for the first time, we had this mixing of age-old separated genetics.
Now, obviously, he wrote The Origin of Species. Um, he wrote several books studying the set of specimens. Um, but his theory was um, animals evolve from one or a few common ancestors and the mechanism by which they do it is natural selection. Um, he found similar animals across the globe, which is really interesting, and similar biomes with different animals. Um, the best adapted animals survived and their children generally had those adaptations. And that's kind of the key part of it. Um, similar animals animals around the globe particularly where we have this splitting of the land masses splitting of pangaea very interesting that you have similar organisms on land masses that were connected Um, so I want to talk about this guy, Wallace. Um, he was known as the father of biogeography. Um, what a jaunty, jaunty man. What a lovely looking man. Um, he looked at the study of how plants and animals were distributed. Um, again, none of this particularly that you have to write down, but he was an interesting character in that he independently came up with a theory of evolution through natural selection. Now, I read somewhere he came, he came up with the idea while he was sitting on a beach um, and he was the reason why Charles Darwin um, was kind of pressured into releasing his origin of species because he came up with a very, very similar but with different evidence theory. So he looked more about plants and animal distribution, but he did come up with this idea of natural selection himself as well. So it seemed like it was the time for it. Um, and we spoke about Lamarck last week. So um, 
biologist and and he sort of came up with his own evolutionary theory he was the first guy to use the term biology but he came up with his own evolutionary theory which was um which is no longer believed um due to evidence talk to quickly about why Darwin. Um, why didn't Darwin publish earlier? Why didn't he want to? Well, it was a controversial topic due to um, the fact that he was religious, um, as was most people about at the time, and religious beliefs about how the earth developed. Um, um, obviously, was that God created all creatures, but he came up with the first um, the first idea that God wasn't a creator, and so that's obviously very controversial. Um, he also couldn't explain everything, so he couldn't explain how useful characteristics just turned up on some organisms. Um, he didn't know anything about genes, genetics, mutations. Um, he didn't know how um, things were passed on from um, from parents to their offspring because genes the idea of a gene wasn't wasn't about until 50 years later um obviously there were other people like Lamarck who had their ideas um but new evidence helped develop the theory so new evidence of genes aligned with Darwin's theory but didn't align with Lamarck's theory um um what else I'm just trying to think oh, I've put alongside genes mutations no one had heard of those moths and um, this is more evidence. So the black pepper moss that you got last time was really good evidence about how uh, mutations allow for natural selection. Um, and I've also put antibiotics because we now have in our lifetime, we are seeing organisms evolve through natural selection to become resistant to antibiotics. And that is evolution by natural selection. So if we are killing all of the bacteria that antibiotics can, the ones with mutations survive and they reproduce. They are naturally selecting they have um, their environment and also we use natural selection now to selectively breed to clone and all those things so um why darwin well D darwin developed a theory and evidence came along and new evidence came along supported this theory so he had a hypothesis um that has become an accepted theory right so the crux of today is speciation and extinction so we're going to talk about speciation um and this is about how new species form. So we were talking about how Darwin spoke about how on all of the different islands there were different finches. Um, this is because of speciation. So we're going to talk about that now. So you need to list three ways in which two populations of the same species bec could become isolated. Maybe pause. I, I already did pause. Um, so how could they become isolated? Well, look, habitat lost in the center, mountains forming, earthquakes, um, human interaction. There's lots of things. Um, oh, that's a really sad picture in the bottom. So generally, speciation has to uh, occurs when isolation is the first step. So you need to know what a species is. You need to know uh, ways in which species become isolated and how new species arise. And you have to use the term speciation and isolation. So let's define species before we begin. So a species is a group of organisms with similar, they still have variation, but with similar characteristics that can reproduce uh, to form fertile offspring. Rather annoyingly, I'd normally do a practical about speciation, but we were unable to do that, obviously, because you're at home. Um, but here's some keywords that are really useful for today's lesson. And now we're going to talk about how speciation does occur. So speciation is about making a new species. So how a new species comes about. So if I've got two identical finches and they get separated, how do I end up with new species because of that? So the first step is isolation. So if you geographically, so earthwise isolate people from the original population um so say yeah we've got continental drift so let's say two species of bird have been living in harmony and then all of a sudden pangaea breaks and they start drifting away from one another how does that make a new species well that's step two there'll be different environmental conditions in the new population so let's say bird a has gone somewhere hot and bird b has gone somewhere cold um you are likely to get mutations within those populations, uh, which will create new variations. So, for example, if bird A has gone somewhere hot, um, 
bird A with the longer limbs um, and longer wings so they can have a large surface area to lose heat more efficiently um, might uh, be better adapted to surviving or they might then um, be different from other birds and so that is a mutation or you might get a mutation where the birds have gone somewhere cold that you might get a bird that's born with loads and loads of fluffy wings or something along those lines. Natural selection occurs whereas over many years the best adapted individuals survive and reproduce. So our friend with the large surface area to lose heat more efficiently, mutated better, his genes are going to be passed down, etc. The new population eventually changes to the point where it can no longer interbreed with the old population because those changes are so inherent and, and, and long lasting. So, for example, if we're talking about Darwin's finches, um, you um, over time, uh, the ones uh, on the islands full of nuts will have had a harder beak and the ones with the islands full of worms will have a longer beak. And eventually they're so different from one another, they can no longer breed. Speciation occurred. Um, so here's the summary, isolation, variation, natural selection, speciation. So, um, so you can see over here, there's a little picture of a bird eating bugs. Um, can you see all the green ones are getting eaten? So which ones are natural, by, via natural selection going to survive and maybe eventually become a new species where it's going to be the acorny type looking ones? Um, if you see as well, those are amazing, those beautiful uh, sea creatures. They are all originally were part of the same species. And now look how different they are. So make sure you've got that flow chart in your book. I've got a summary on the next page. So the population becomes isolated, isolated, isolated. Um, then it shows variation, possibly from mutation. Some individuals are more likely to reproduce and therefore the isolated population changes so much it's no longer able to breed with the old population to produce fertile offspring. Um, I have a feeling this is cut off the bottom. Um, that's annoying. Um, so uh, put the following in order. So maybe pause. So the third one is the first one. Second one is the second one. First one is the third one. And the bottom one is the fourth one. This is a really good example of an exam question, um, which I think is lovely because you're picking out an explanation for the evolution. So you're picking out the speciation, which I really like. So the dodo lived on a small island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Ancestors were pigeon-like birds, which flew to the island millions of years ago. There were no predators on the island. There was a lot of fruit on the ground. The fruit became the main diet of the birds. Gradually, the birds became much heavier and lost their ability to fly and evolved into the dodo. Suggest so an explanation for the evolution of the pigeon-like ancestors. So, suggest an explanation. Well, they've been separated geographically because they have flown to a small island. Um, and let's see the explanation for the evolution. So, I've got some highlighted, I think. There we go. So, there were no predators on the island. There was fruit on the ground. So, therefore, they became land dwellers. They got heavier and lost their ability to fly. So, over time, through natural selection, they become heavier and have had no need to fly. How did the dodo get smaller wings? Advantages, what would be the advantage of having a fatter body? What would be the advantage of no longer having wings? And how does the new variation spread to the whole population? So how did the dodo get smaller wings? Well, there probably was a mutation with a dodo with smaller wings. Um, and then that has been passed on uh, through natural selection. Um, it also wasn't wasting energy flying as well. What would be the advantage of having a fatter body and what would be the advantage of no longer having wings? Well, fatter body is going to keep you warmer. It's going to sustain you. No longer having wings means that you, um, wings give you a larger surface area as well. So if you're reducing the surface area, you lose heat slower. Um, we have less efficient surface for heat loss. So that's really good. How does the new variation spread to the whole population? Well, that is through the genes, through natural selection, through reproduction. Mutation variation, lovely, produces smaller wings, fatter body. The wings no longer an advantage because there's no predators and there's food on the ground, store more energy and they pass on their genes.
Lovely. Here's another one. Salamanders. Again, never been taught about these, but this is just about you picking up the information. This is an AO2 skill. Salamanders are terrestrial amphibians. Terrestrial means ground. Um, amphibians means they live in water and on land. The diagram shows the distribution of four species of salamander. From a distance, this looks like a like bony limb. Um, right, okay, so we've got species Z in the mountains, we've got species Y in the lowlands, and species W that does a bit of both, and species X does a bit of both. Originally, there was only one species of salamander. Suggest salamander. Suggest an explanation for the development of the new species. Give it a go. Pause it. Uh, the populations became isolated or separated by the areas between the mountains. Genetic variation, natural selection acted differently, eventually resulting in interbreeding being no longer possible. So you will have they will have been adapted to live in uh, specific areas. Um, this is just another really good example of how they can just shoehorn it in there and try and confuse you with words. So how we are for for Sturiana and Howia bellamore are two species of palm tree. Do you need to know what these words mean? No. Do you need to know anything about palm trees? No. It's just about species. And these are plants, so they're not animal species, they're plants, but they undergo the same thing. The table gives some information about these two species of palm tree in the South Pacific. So they have an optimum pH is different, height above sea level is different, the monthly flowers is different, and the method of uh, pollination looks like they're both wing carriers by the look of it. I think it is cut off. I don't know what's the matter with this PowerPoint. Um, so let's have a look at the question. Scientists believe that these two, yeah, wing carriers, palm, good. Scientists believe these two species of palm tree began to evolve from a single species over two million years ago. Suggest how two different species developed. In your answer, you should use information from the table and your knowledge. So how a speciation happened, use information from the table. I would suggest the sea level is probably going to be the useful part here. Make sure you pause. OK, so they both live at different pHs, different height above sea level and different flowering times. So at some point when they were separated, there would have been a genetic variation, mutation. Natural selections act differently in the two populations or different characteristics depending on where they ended up via their geographical isolation, resulting in interbreeding being no longer possible. Can you see on every example you've seen the word genetic variation, mutation, natural selection and interbreeding? Make sure you are always using these keywords. Um, here's a really lovely example. I love these. So these, these are quite famous for being Darwin type tortoises. The following are two separate species of tortoise that were separated when an island chain split in two. The vegetation is uh, at diff the vegetation is different on the two islands. What are the differences between the two tortoises? Now the one at the top, flatter body, really long neck. The one at the bottom, much more domed appearance, short neck. So what are the differences? That's that. Why do you think that may have occurred? Well, they've said the vegetation is different, so I would suggest might want to pause this and have a go by yourself now, just to test that you've just got it. Learn that flow diagram. Pause it. So the population has become isolated as the island splits and move apart. One island has food that's harder to reach or higher. The other has lower lying food. Variation could be caused by mutation. Natural selection, longer necks more likely to survive. Two populations become different, they can no longer interbreed. Speciation follows the same pattern, so just learn those phrases. Isolation, mutation, variation, natural selection, speciation. All of the Asians. Um, another one, look at those, that awful, it's not awful, it's marvellous, uh, Latin word, orin to genesis, genesis, genesis to genesis. Gen, gen, tuba genesis. Well, that was fun. I can't say it still. Ancient human, um, so Mayan, uh, which lived in the trees. As the earth warmed and grasslands replaced forest areas over much of Africa, some individuals took to the plains to live. So they came down from the trees. Over time, they grew taller, longer legs, and led to a new species, Homo habilis. Using our knowledge of speciation, explain how a new species arose from the old. Again, another example, same thing. So the grassland populated were isolated from the forest population. 
there's variation, mutation for height maybe, the taller individuals reproduce and the taller population develop, no longer reproduce with the old population. And that is how humans, one day, a human that had straighter hips stood up um, and that's how we got Homo erectus. And over time, Homo erectus then could not reproduce with Homo habilis in the same way that Homo sapiens, so wise man, would no longer be able to reproduce with Homo sapiens. Nope. Homo erectus, standing humans. Um, I hope that's quite simple. I don't think it's a particularly difficult concept. Next time we'll do um, genes, uh, the development of knowledge of genes.